cloud. All right, we're official. All right, so welcome to our monthly nutrition talk. Uh, after taking a little bit of a break this summer, uh, we're going to be resuming these talks uh, on the first Thursday of every month, starting at seven o'clock Eastern time. And we're going to rotate between uh, Stacy and Alex, Coach Alex, and myself. So are you next, Stace? Okay, cool. So we'll have some information up in about a week for that. It's going to be the same link every time that CrossFitCleveland.com slash, slash register. Uh, tonight, I'm doing a special episode of what we what has been called Grill with Bill. And I'm going to be showing you three of my favorite ways to prepare and cook fresh salmon. Uh, first one's going to be cedar plank salmon. And then I'm going to do uh, cooking salmon on a grill, blackened, and then cooked in an air fryer, believe it or not. Um, I, if you ever would have told me before I got an air fryer that that would become one of my favorite ways to cook fish out of laughed at you. Uh, but it's really very easy, believe it or not. In between those three methods, I'm going to have a question session. So if you have any questions about that, you can ask. You don't have to wait till the end. Uh, if you want to pipe in right away, you're welcome to it. But just remember at the end of each, and it's only going to be like four or five minutes for each one. It's fairly quick. You can ask me anything. Um, I'm not going to bore you with a lot of information that I think you might be interested in uh, that gets me going off on all kinds of uh, tangents and it'll spend a lot of time. If uh, any of you know me, I can I can talk forever on stuff that I enjoy. So I'm going to keep to a, a, a little bit of a script here. Uh, but if I don't cover something that you think I should be including, just ask. That means I know you're interested in it. And if I don't have a good answer for you, I'll get back to you tomorrow. Uh, before I get started, I just want to recognize our sponsor. Tonight's talk is sponsored by Panacea Wellness. It's a local um, medical spa owned by one of our members at CrossFit Cleveland, Dr. Kelly Roan, and Kelly's with us. Uh, we're going to be raffling off a prize later worth about $140, I believe, and that Kelly has generously donated, and he's going to be talking at, towards the end of the talk just a couple minutes about the services that they provide. So if you have any questions for him, then you can do that. Thank you, Kelly. So let's get started. You know, I hear it all the time from friends and clients. Uh, they say they love seafood, but they won't cook it at home, uh, either because it tastes like crap when they do it, they overcook it, or they just don't know how, so they avoid it. Um, does anyone else feel that way? Give me a raise, hand or hand raise. <laughs> so first off, before I start talking about what I do, I want to be clear that I am not a chef and I'm not even a cook. I'm just a guy who figured out how to cook things and make things and they happen to taste good. So I make the same thing over and over. And I'm, and if I figured it out, so can you. Uh, so I'm just here to share some of those ideas with you. Um, I purposely chose salmon for tonight. And I think that might have uh, kept some people away because they don't like salmon. Um, that's the reason I chose it because a lot of people don't like it. Uh, even though they know it's a great source of protein, a, a great source of, of omega-3, essential fatty acids, vitamins, minerals, all that stuff. But it, they say it tastes too fishy for them. And I'm here to tell you, if you buy the right salmon and you handle it properly and you cook it awesome. and don't overcook it, it's not fishy tasting at all. Um, so I always look for the freshest looking and most expensive fish I can find. Uh, I never freeze it. And I don't overcook it because I keep my eye on it. And we're going to talk about that tonight, ways to keep you from overcooking. So I'm going to start with how to prepare and cook fresh Atlantic salmon on a cedar plank. Uh, it's the most time consuming of the three methods, both in prep and in actual cooking. But it's really easy to do. It's just a little more time consuming. And I think it turns out awesome. Stacy, do you like the cedar plank salmon? I think it might be my favorite might be your favorite. So I'm due for doing that. And of course, you see my kitchen behind me. But instead of having Stacy follow me around on the deck and the patio where my grills are, and it's raining outside now, uh, and having you watch me through all the cooking time, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you in pictures. So I bear with me. I think it's going to be a much better way to get my message across and not have you sitting here watching me and talking while everything's cooking. That sound like a good idea? Yep. Let's go. Good thing, because that's what you got. <laughs> I'm going to share my screen. I've got a Google Slides thing going. And let's see how this works. Where did it go now? There it is. 
Okay, here. And I'm going to go in slideshow. By the most expensive piece of fish. Hold on. Oh. Ooh. I did it already. Oh, like that. And if anybody is not on mute, if you could mute yourself, just so that if you happen to have a dog barking or a kid crying in the background, it doesn't ruin my recording. And if you have any questions, feel free to take yourself off mute. All right. Can everybody, oops, hang on, back up. Can everybody see that? My shared screen? Thumbs up? I guess if I talk, tell you to mute and then I ask you a question, that's kind of dumb, isn't it? All right. So talking about where I get my fish, seafood, uh, my favorite place to buy fish is at Heinen's. Uh, their, their seafood counter for a grocery store, I think, can't be beat. Uh, Whole Foods is second, uh, but I seem to like the consistency and the pricing. Well, pricing is crazy high everywhere these days. Um, but I just like Heinen's. I they, they just never fail me. I know there are a couple places downtown where uh, restaurants source their seafood. Uh, I'm open to any suggestions if you know a better place than Heinen's, but I just, it's convenient. It's local. I stick with it. Uh, their organic Atlantic salmon is really good. That's what I have pictured here. Uh, I was having it most of the summer and then lately uh, they're having a hard time keeping it in stock. They can't, they, the fish guy there says they can't grow the fish fast enough. It's becoming very popular. So my second favorite for Atlantic salmon is the Verlasso brand. Um, it's it's one of those trusted brands. Uh, I don't buy just Atlantic salmon off the off the rack at a giant eagle that doesn't have a name attached that they can't source back to the they, they can't trace back to the source. I just don't trust them because Atlantic salmon. There's a lot of talk out there. People say it's not as healthy as 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 a wild Alaskan salmon. Um, I do get Alaskan salmon once in a while, but Stacy doesn't like it. So guess what? We get Atlantic salmon. Um, I prefer fresh seafood whenever I can get it, meaning not previously frozen. Uh, sometimes you don't have a choice, but I typically avoid previously frozen for any things like salmon, swordfish, grouper, mahi, uh, turbot, uh, halibut, and ahi tuna. Those are the primary fishes that I, that I cook. So we're going to start with cedar plank salmon, and this is what it's going to look like right before it hits the grill. So let me show you how I get there or got to this point by preparing the filet and the toppings. You can top it with anything you want. Uh, I like either red onion or a shallot, um, a clove or two of garlic, and some kind of nut. Here I got pistachios. Uh, I can use cashews, almonds. Uh, wal you can do walnuts, anything you like. But that combination just seems to be the right one for me. So I dice it up roughly equal portions and it's fairly small pieces and I mix it all together and then I put a seasoning on it and I have a bunch of favorites this is one of my favorite brands uh, chef Paul Prudhomme uh, he's got a bunch of different seasonings there's this is called red fish magic. He's got seafood magic. He's got like six or seven and they all, they all taste kind of the same. So I just grab whatever I see on the counter uh, at the grocery store. And so I add a decent amount and I am pretty generous with the seasonings. So there's quite a bit there. I mix it all together. Now I've rinsed and dried my fresh salmon filet. That's one thing you want to make sure you pat it dry before you put anything on it. Uh, I leave the skin, hang on, I'll show you how to, re I remove the skin prior to cooking a little bit later. So now it's time to go onto the cedar plank. So sometimes I soak the plank in water for about an hour. Sometimes I don't. Um, if you read any instructions or recipes, they always tell you to soak cedar planks for a couple hours so they don't catch on fire. I'm only going to cook this thing for 20 minutes, so it's not necessary. I've cooked dry cedar planks before, and it really doesn't make much difference, but I typically will soak it for about an hour. Then I lay it at a light layer of kosher or sea salt on the top of the salmon. And you see, I like to slit, I take a sharp knife and I'll cut some slits in it. It just allows you to have more 
of a topping in there. It's not necessary. It's just something I've always done. Then I coat the salmon with yellow mustard. This helps keep the toppings in place in instead of falling off. And it adds a bit of moisture to the salmon af after you cook it. Uh, if you're looking and making a face and going, why you put mustard on your salmon, you will not taste it. You could be here. I could cook this for you. And you'll say, mm, there's, I taste something, but I don't know what it is. You will never guess it's mustard. So don't shy away from it. Uh, it's what I use on when I use for ribs, um, wings. Mustard is a great way to keep your seasonings and coatings to stick. Then I spread the toppings and here you go. It's ready for the grill. So I put it right on the grill at a medium high heat and I close the lid. I usually take a, a large, I have this really big spatula that I don't use for cooking. It's just, it's like a big fly swatter kind of thing. And I stick it under my, the lid so I can keep it about an inch or two open. Um, it's, and that's not necessary, but we still keeps, it's still closed enough where it keeps the smoke in the grill, but I can peek under every once in a while and see if that cedar plank is catching on fire before I want it to. So I cook it for about 20 minutes before I crank up the heat because I want that plank to catch fire and cook it for the last couple of minutes. It's going to char the edges. And so that's what it's going to look like when I open that up after it's been cranked up as high as I can get it. I'm going to let it go like that for a couple minutes. Now I have a video, it's about a 10 or 15 second video that shows that and it's a couple different angles so you can see how the flames are going. But in, when I tested this earlier, I went to the video and then I couldn't get back to the slideshow. So if anybody wants to see that, I'll show it at the end. Fair enough? Okay. So that is how you cook cedar plank salmon. If I did this live, it would take about a half an hour, 35 minutes, you'd be bored out of your mind. So now if you want to, anybody has a question, you can take yourself off mute. It's pretty straightforward. Where do you get your planks? Good question. Uh, I, up until this past year, I'd always get them at uh, Costco at the beginning of the year. They would have a stack of maybe 10 or 12 for about $15. If you go to Heinen's or if, like go to Whole Foods, you buy two cedar planks, I think they cost you 12 bucks. They're, they'll they kill you. Um, the last batch I bought was off Amazon. I think I got, um, I'm supposed to bring one down here, a six by 10 inch, probably 10 of them for maybe $18. So don't pay more than a couple bucks a piece for them. And then I will often take a, a saw that I have, a little hand saw that I have in my garage, and I'll cut them in half so I'm not wasting anything because I'm rarely cooking something that's that big. What temperature were you cooking that in the beginning before you turned it up? Well, I just go medium high heat. I don't I don't have a really good thermometer for the air in my gas grill. Okay. I would say it's medium high. Okay. And it takes about 20 minutes. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit when we get into the next piece how you can tell when it's done. Uh, but 20 minutes at a medium high heat seems to work. This is a probably a dumb question, but do you reuse those cedar planks or no? I don't because I you, you can if if I have one and I don't catch it on fire, I may reuse it. But because they're inexpensive enough and I cut them in half, I just toss them out. That was my question, so it wasn't dumb at all. <laughs> Nothing's dumb, and you know if you there, are, it, there are people that do cedar plank like veggies. So you can you could wash it off and use it again. Or I would, but cooked fish, and then I usually don't go. I don't go out and clean the grill till later, or maybe in the morning, and so I don't really think I want to reuse that plank. And the skin, the skin sticks to it, and it's kind of you'll right. know. How about this? You'll know if you want to reuse it or not. Stacy's shaking her head no. I so have a question in case nobody knows. Go ahead. Um, you had farm raised versus, uh, and in your first picture, you used farm raised versus wild caught. So there, as far as I know, there's no such thing as wild caught Atlantic salmon. It's all farmed. It's just how well they treat those farmed animals and farmed fish, and how well they feed them. What they what then what they don't give to them. The wild caught is the Atlant is the Alaskan.
Anybody know any different than that? Yeah. Ready to go on? Let's see what I got. All right. So hang on. I forget. So next I'm going to show you how to grill, but not just salmon. So if you want to see how these techniques or my tips apply to other fish, I'm going to have three different fish coming. We're going to cook and and, and they're it's pretty much the same. Whether you cook them on a grill or on a stovetop, the preparation is pretty similar. So here's three fresh fillets that I have. A piece of salmon, a piece of halibut, and a piece of mahi-mahi, or sometimes called dolphin fish when you're in Florida or the Caribbean. And if you're in the Pacific side, they refer to it as dorado. It's all the same. So I always rinse the fillets under cold water and dry them with a paper towel before adding my seasoning of choice. Uh, sometimes I use the mustard as a binding agent. Sometimes I just sprinkle the stuff on. So in this picture, I didn't use any mustard, but it, and it all sticks. So now I have my grill up to medium high heat and I spray my grill pan with either MCT or avocado oil. So a couple of things here I'll show you. I grill pan, I cook on a grill, but I don't ever put the fish on the grates because that's what you'll have trouble with. It'll fall through, it'll stick and it gets messy. So I have a couple of pans. This is a just a aluminum. If this is old, oh, uh, excuse the dirt. I haven't, I'm not using this anymore. I need to replace it, but I still have it under my grill. This is gonna be the pan that I'm using for a lot of what you're gonna see. My favorite is, it's called the Rock Grill Pan. They have it at Costco every once in a while. They have it at Amazon, Amazon all the time. It's called the Rock. It's got, on this side, it's it's a grill pan. And the other side, it's a griddle. So you can cook pretty much anything on there. I like putting that on my grill. More than just the reason of not having the food fall through the grates is that it will help to even out the heat. Almost everybody's grill has a hot spot and a, and a, and a cooler spot. And so it's hard to move stuff around on the grates. But if you have a pan like this, it tends to even it out a little bit more. As far as the oil, another little tool we have, Stacy found this little spray bottle that we keep MCT oil in. And so this is an easy way for me to, to do, go on the grill and do that. Or we'll use sometimes that the Pam kind of stuff, the olive oil, or try to get avocado oil spray. But this little sprayer comes in handy. So I'm gonna start cooking the can salmon out of these three because it can rest longer after cooking it um, without drying out. And I'm gonna show you first how to easily remove the skin if you don't like to have the skin on your salmon. So I'm gonna start this, so this pan that I'm cooking on is the one I just showed you. So I'll have the avocado or the MCT oil on and I'm gonna cook the side that I'm gonna, excuse me. I'm gonna start cooking it skin side down. Uh, cooking times vary, and it mainly depends on how your how hot your grill is and how thick your piece of fish is. Uh, typically, I cook for four to five minutes per side over medium high heat for a piece about one inch thick or a little bit smaller. Okay. I first start with the skin down on this Atlantic salmon for about two to three minutes. And I look for the skin when it's starting to char. So I'll take a spatula and I'll just kind of take a peek and it's right before it looks like it, right before it's looking like it's going to burn. Then I turn it over and I use a thin blade metal spatula to remove the skin. It comes right off. So you just stick it under one side and you just kind of shimmy it around and you'll take that piece right off. And so I'll cook the salmon on that side for about four minutes. And then I'll turn it back over and finish it off for a couple more minutes on the bottom side now that the skin is removed. So here's another picture that I found just showing you how I can take a spatula and just slide it under and remove that skin. And then I fi finish cooking the skin and get it a little crispy. And if you're wondering why, I'll tell you more about that in a couple minutes. If any of you are dog lovers, your dog is going to love that. So now that the salmon's been cooking, 
I'm going to add the mahi and the halibut, and I'll cook the skin off the exact same way. Uh, this piece of halibut is a little bit thinner than the salmon and the mahi, so I'll cook. That's going to cook a little quicker. So here's when I pull. Here's when I pull any of them. You want a, a way to tell? One way to tell if the fish is done. You take a fork and you stick it in the thickest part of the, the meat. And as you pull on it, it should easily flake off. If you have to tug at it to get it to break off, it's not done yet, or you've overcooked it. But if you're paying attention and you're keeping to these time limits, you're not gonna overcook the fish that quickly. So go for that easily flaked. And if you have an instant read thermometer, which I always use, um, my favorite brand is a thermal pen. Um, their instant read, you stick this pen in a piece of meat of any sort and you get your reading in a second and a half. And so what I'm looking for, what I'm looking for, because I like my fish medium rare, is 135 to 140 degrees of internal temperature. And so then I'll let it rest for three to five minutes. It'll continue to cook a little bit, but it won't dry out. So that temperature is going to come up a little bit off the grill. So that's why I pull it a little bit under the temperature that I want. But I've let salmon rest 30 minutes, maybe up to an hour, and it still tastes good. It doesn't dry out. Whereas other cups of fish, um, you pretty much want to rest it three to five minutes and eat it fairly quickly. So then as I'm finishing up, those are the other, that's a, the back of the halibut and the mahi. I'm cooking those pieces of skin also. Our dog, Jesse used to love this. She used to sit next to the grill and not move while I was cooking anything because she knew that that salmon skin was coming. And it was, I think it was one of her favorite treats ever. So if you have a dog yourself, maybe a cat, I don't know if a cat would like that or a neighbor's. Now I give it to the neighbor's dog when they're out. So I don't, and if they're not out, I throw it away the next day. So it's a pretty simple process. It takes four to five minutes per side and that's out on a, on a grill. You can also do this on a stovetop. Uh, I don't cook fish in the house because you know who does not like me to stink up her house, and it, especially salmon. You're, when I cook my salmon, there's no fishy taste at all, but it will smell, make the house smell like fish for a week. So be on guard. If you haven't cooked salmon before and you're going to go try one of these recipes, do it outside or, or buyer beware. Um, so here's uh, the same cooking time, I'm using a regular frying pan on a stovetop. The prepping is the same. This is a piece of grouper. I blackened it. I cooked it on the stove for about seven or eight minutes. And then I popped it on a piece of salad or a, on, a, on a nice homemade salad. So that piece, and that was a fresh piece of grouper and grouper is expensive. It cost probably about $8. But if I had a meal like that, it would probably cost me 20 or $25 out in a restaurant. So that's how I grill fish fillets. So any questions so far? I know I'm flying through this, but I want to have more time for questions. If you want me to go back over anything, I can. I don't think I have a question, but I, I can I tell you how I just learned about a month ago how to take the skin off? Sure. You mean so, you're cooking. so yeah, my fiance just taught me this. So what we do with this to get the skin off is so we have an electric tea kettle so we can get water to boil in really quick. But if you don't have that, obviously you could just maybe boil a little water. And then we just have a grating that we set in the sink, set the fish on that skin side up and just pour a little bit of boiling water just kind of on it. And it, it'll it shrink up and you can just peel the skin off immediately yeah. and then move straight into cooking. It's It's been awesome. It's I, I never really, I literally just learned this this past month. So I'm going to try it because I have the next slide. It's going to be how I manually take it off. And it's not, not easy. Uh, so I'm going to try that for yeah. sure. Uh, do you always start every time you cook fish with your skin side down, all, no matter what fish? I do when I'm trying to cook, the, cook it off. That's the oh. only reason. Okay, so let's think about this. I'm going to cook. Let's round up to five minutes per side. It's a good thick piece of salmon. I'm going to put that skin side down for about two minutes at least. Then I'm going to turn it over. 
start cooking for five minutes on the other side while I strip that skin off. And I still need two or three more minutes on that skin side that I've removed. And so then I'll turn it back over and I'll finish it. That's, so just, are you gonna, that's just the way I gonna, do So you're going to talk about, do you take the skin, like you guys, I'm, I'm assuming like you just guys said, well, is it, do you always start with the skin on or do you prefer it or is it just whoever wants to do it? Take the skin off before you grill. That's a good question. So we started with the cedar plank. I just leave it on for the cedar plank because what it what I when it's done cooking, it just peels right off the the skin sticks to the cedar plank. And when you you I can take a spatula right underneath and take the salmon off and the skin stays burnt onto the cedar plank. If I'm going to cook it in the air fryer, which is going to be the, the, the next one, I'm going to show you how I, I take the skin off and I do it manually. Now I have a new way that Kelly just told me about. <laughs> so in, in its personal preference, Kathy, some people like skin on. So, but the easiest way I found if you're going to grill it is just cook it off. And then you have the skin to use for your dog or your cat or whatever. Oh, the cat. Uh, one more question. Do you use your... I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Do you do you use your rock the rock uh, grill pan for everything? Do you keep it on your grill at all time? I bet probably this is a general after the discussion question, but I you know, do you keep it on all the time? Do you use it for everything when you grill it on the grill? I use that rock pan, or I have a two cast iron uh, cast iron grill pans that it's a grill pan on one side and a griddle on the other. They're they're like ten inches square. So if you go and okay. look at my that grill that so i have a bunch of, i have a charcoal grill i have a traeger smoker and i have a uh the regular gas grill that okay. i saw here on there i have if you open my grill right now i have two 10 inch by 10 inch cast iron pans that's a grill pan on one side and the grill on the other then i have the the rock sits on or the i better give you the name of this because this is really a handy pan I just realized it's got a name on the back. I bought this at Costco a few years ago. It's called a back backsplash griddle. And bear with me. My lighting is bad down here. Hang on. By Nordic, it's Nordic Ware. This has been the the best pan I've ever had. Um, but again, it's kind of worn out and it's big. But one of the reasons why I never bought a Blackstone griddle and I wanted one for a couple of years is that I can do everything on this. This sits right on my grill and then I, I just keep it there. And then I have a um, a grill basket that I use for vegetables and clam bakes and that's there and it's always underneath my grill. So when I'm cooking, just to, I take everything out and just use what I'm going to use. And so, but almost everything that I cook on that grill is on that that rock or the other one. Thank you. I never cook on the grates. Now oh, on my okay. Traeger, it's a different story. On my smoker, I have a different setup, but we're just talking about the regular grill for now. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Anything else? All right, roll right along. Oops. Ah. All right, so now I'm going to talk about how you can take the skin off the way I've done it until I just learned the new hot water trick. I'm going to try that soon. This is what it's going to look like after you struggle and tear the salmon skin off the back of the filet. So as you separate it, you generally get a little piece of a small end to come off with you. And then I don't want to waste it, so I figure out how to scrape it off. But it looks like this. I'll take... A sharp knife. I'll take the the the. I start with the the thicker end of the fillet, and I'll take a sharp knife and I'll slide it and start cutting a little bit under the skin, and maybe have a little quarter tab, maybe a half an inch of it, and then I'll take a paper towel and use that to grip it. So you can try this with your fingers and thumb. I don't care how good a grip you have, you're not going to be able to hold on to that little piece of skin. Uh, you take a paper towel and it's just it's it's like it's like vice grips. And you just peel it right back. Now, sometimes it's tough to get off. And so I'll take a bigger knife and I'll lay it and press it on the filet as I'm pulling on the skin. But 
if you have a good fresh piece of salmon, especially that organic stuff at, at Heinen's, that's been the easiest skin I've ever had to take off of any piece of, of any type of salmon I've had. And I had, I was chatting with the guy at the fish counter once and he said he thinks the same thing. It's just that particular brand, but it takes me just about 10 or 15 seconds to just kind of work it off. You can see on the picture on the right, I'm just peeling it off and done. But again, it's not always easy. One time you might have it easy. The other time you're going to, you're going to feel like you're going to throw it away. So uh, just give it a try. So look, I'm going to show you how now I use the air fryer. And using the air fryer, I use pretty much the same prep way, prep for whether I'm cooking swordfish, mahi, uh, halibut, uh, turbot, and my favorite grouper. Uh, so the next few steps is going to be how I prepare and cook grouper in the air fryer. I just found these pictures uh, from probably a year ago that I took it, and I really thought it was a good example of how to prep fish a little differently than you might do. Uh, I mean, it's the same process for any of the fillets that you want to cook. So here, this is I'm starting with a, about a six to eight ounce piece of fresh grouper. And I'm going to top it with a light layer of breadcrumbs and French fried onions. Uh, instead of mustard as the binding agent, I happen to soak this in buttermilk uh, because I had it. Uh, soaking in buttermilk, I'll give you a little trick. If you ever have a piece of fish that's a little bit fishy smelling, maybe you had it in an extra day or two, but it's still good, but it's just a little bit smelly. If you smoke, soak, soak it in any kind of milk, it, it, uh, it takes that smell away pretty much completely so to reduce that fishy smell and so then I'm going to take my toppings I'm going to grind them up or sometimes I put them in a plastic bag and I'll take a meat tenderizing hammer and just pound them into crumbs and I'll coat that typically when I cook on the uh, grill or air fryer I'm just putting the seasonings on one side uh, a little bit later, I'll show you one time when I do both, but I'm going to take the coatings there and then I have my favorite Chef Paul Prudhomme seasoning and you can use anything that you want. You can use Obey. There's just millions of different seasonings and I'll spread that on the top. Notice I have it on an air fryer tray liner. Uh, it's made of parchment paper. Um, you can buy like a hundred sheets of those for like 10 bucks. Uh, so they last forever, and it's, it makes it easier to clean your air fryer pan. And while I've been preparing this fish, I've been preheating my air fryer to 350 degrees, which takes about four minutes. Uh, just to give you a little tip, never, ever put a piece of that parchment lining paper in your air fryer when you're preheating it without any food on it, or you'll burn your house down. <laughs> I almost did that the first time. The, the way the air flows in that, because it's really a convection oven, that that paper flows around, goes right up on the top of the burner and starts on fire. So it's pretty dangerous. So there's a fish setting on my air fryer. There's a button, if you hit it, it, it presets it for 350 degrees for eight minutes. And believe it or not, that's almost perfect for any piece of fish that's about an inch thick or less. Uh, so as I cook it, I don't need to turn it. I don't need to do anything except let it cook. Then after that eight minute mark, I'll check the doneness, the same as I would if it was on the grill. I'll take a fork and I'll see if I can tug at it and see if it'll it'll separate easily. Flake that, the visual flake on the thickest end. And then I'll usually always stick the, the food thermometer in and check it for that 135 to 140 temperature as a minimum. If it's not quite there or it's you like your fish cooked a little more, a minute or two more at 350 is all you need to do. Or sometimes what I'll do is I'll just let it sit in the air fryer. The buzzer will go off after eight minutes. It's still hot, but it's just the heat's not continually going, but it's still warm. And I'll let it sit for two or three more minutes. Stacy typically likes her salmon a little more cooked, especially if I'm cooking it for the week. For like We're going to have, let's say it's Sunday night, we're having salmon and I cook an extra piece for her Monday lunch, I'll leave that in there for two or three extra minutes and it'll come 
out exactly how she wants it. And it's almost impossible to overcook it if you've turned the heat off and you just let the fish sit in in the warm air fryer. But some of you may be shaking your head going, air fryer for fish? You're kidding me? You're buying, you're spending $32 a pound for grouper and you're cooking in an air fryer? Yeah, I can't believe it either. But it's awesome and it's simple. And I keep that. I have a little garage kitchen where I have uh, an induction pan, uh, uh, a little, whatever, a little cooktop, one of those induction kind next to my air fryer. And so nobody, Stacy never complains if I make the garage smell like salmon, as long as it's not in the kitchen. So it is easy as that. So any questions to this point? Make me sound like a pain in the ass. No, you know, well, I, or, or I, <laughs> I, it makes me sound like a wonderful husband. <laughs> True. Wow. True both ways. <laughs> um, I have a question. Does soaking your in the buttermilk or milk take the fishy flavor away too when it's like a real fishy fishy fish <laughs> well you know i don't know the answer to that um because I, I never have fishy fishy tasting fish <laughs> yeah, yeah I, i'm not a huge i read that tip once i and you know what i don't even know how effective it is but i read it once i had the buttermilk and so i tried it you know i had buttermilk because i was making creamy coleslaw i don't usually have buttermilk around so i really don't know the answer to that kathy Kathy, I can tell you growing up, my mom always soaked the her fish in milk for that reason. And I'm not a huge fish person. And I think it does take some of that fishy out. When you say go ahead. When you say soak, do you mean just kind of dip or do you mean leave it for a certain amount of time? And if so, how long? Yeah. Uh, another good question. I don't know. Uh, I've read that, that you'd leave if you have if it's for the purpose of trying to 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 cut the the smell and maybe the taste to leave it in, you can leave it overnight. I probably just had that soaked in there for a minute or two just as a to act as a binding agent. But I don't remember for sure. And since I don't go by re I don't go by recipes, I just do everything by feel. Um, I never read how long you're supposed to do it. Fair enough. But I don't think you could leave it overnight. I don't see it any reason as long as it's refrigerated. I don't see an issue of how long doing it too long would be a problem. Not like leaving our clams in water for too long. <laughs> you guys heard about that was a, that was a real eye opener. You could do that overnight, but you can't do it for two days. They die and infect all the rest. Mm hmm. <laughs> So any other questions to this point before we move along? Got yes. a couple more little things. Have you tried any of this with walleye, Bill? No, sir. If you would like to catch a fresh walleye before the end of the year while you're out fishing, Bob, and have and clean it up and cut it up for me or fillet it up and give it to me, I'll give it a shot. But I don't see why the air the, the air fryer should be fine. So I I, sh I would probably do all of them because it's a it's a that's a fairly uh, sturdy fish, right? I'm not a big walleye fan. Next summer we'll try it. Okay. Yeah, I do not know. I'm not afraid to tell you. I do not know. All right. So before we go any further, uh, word from our sponsor, um, Kelly has graciously donated a package of three infrared sauna sessions at his medical spa, Panacea. It's valued about $140. And if you're on this call, your name's going to be entered into the drawing that we're going to do later. But I'd like to give him an opportunity to just, oh, we're going to do one thing. If, if anybody's interested, um, I have one last thing of how I cook seared ahi tuna. Does anybody want to hear that? Yes. Yes. It should be quick. And then I'm going to give Kelly um, a couple of minutes to just tell us a little about the services that they have. He offers at his medical spa, Panacea Wellness. Uh, and you can ask him any questions that you might have. Hey, Bill, can I ask one more question? I'm sorry, you guys. I'm going to put um, a piece of raw tuna staring you in the face while we're talking. That's fine. For someone that does not like fi fish, a lot of fish, what is there a fish you recommend that you start with? 
You like whitefish? It's for someone that does not like any fish, do um, you recommend that, that uh, do you just, you just, like you said in the beginning, see, like, yeah. you okay. know, you have to start liking a fish. <laughs> um, turbot. Turbot? Turbot. T-U-R-B-O-T. And that's the correct, the correct way to say it. Uh, I said it once to the woman in Heinen's and she went, it's turbo, sir. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> it's turbot. It's a white fish. It's, it's a flat fish. It's kind of like... Now, I don't know what I don't want to say it wrong, but it's really mild. Uh, it's easy to cook. It looks and it feels the same kind of texture as tilapia. Uh, but I won't touch tilapia because I've seen pictures of the farms that they raise them in. Uh, and, yeah, it's just uh, and some people may say that Atlantic, farmed Atlantic salmon is the same. And maybe it is in some of the the, the pens that they have. But some of these these newer growers that have their they're more sustainable it's just a, a better healthier farm fish um but i like turbot thank it's you it's not terribly expensive halibut is another good one there's no taste to it but it's expensive if you get if you get fresh halibut at heinen's it's 30 couple dollars a pound now remember you only need a five or six ounce piece you know you're not cooking a ton of it uh so by on a per piece basis it's not terribly expensive but halibut's good uh and turbot it would be my first selection first suggestions thank you sure on cooking this and making sure that you don't overcook it 135 140 seems to be the temperature four to five minutes per side if it's if a little bit less than an inch or so, if I once in a while you, you you'll get a there'll be a side of salmon and it's almost an inch and a quarter thick. That's going to take you maybe five six minutes per side. So it's between that one thirty five to one forty is a good number in the fatter part of the meat, and it should also flake off. If the, if the fish if I can't separate that fish with a fork with a little light pull, I'm letting it cook a little longer. And I'm testing it. So it's not like I'm going to cook, let it cook for so long and then come back to it and go, hmm, let me test it because it might have gone past that point and now it's overcooked. Because if it's if I if it's been six or seven minutes and I can't separate the fish, and then I wait a couple minutes and I can, I'm good. Okay. But if I waited a couple more minutes before touching it, and now let's say two or three or four minutes more, and I'm overcooking it, then it's going to go back to, oh, it's kind of tugged. It's like, no. So now it's like, is that undercooked or overcooked? So you just got to kind of watch it. And because it's only eight, 10 minutes, I, you know, I'll just have a glass of wine and sit there and watch it. So that's what I do. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm going to move along here with my nice piece of yellowfin tuna. It just it happens to be sitting next to a piece of salmon, so you can ignore that. It's pretty quick. The way I prepare this is I'm, this one, I lightly coated it with sesame oil, and I covered it with ground black pepper, and I do that on both sides. And you can put as much pepper on it as you want. And then I'm going to take a grill pan and I'm going to get it as hot as I can. Now, this there's no medium high heat here. Now, I crank my grill as hot as I can get it. So I want it hot as you know what. And then as it's starting to cook, I like mine rare. So it's only about two minutes per side. And it might be a little bit faster depending on how hot the pan is. So what I do is I watch the side of the tuna steak and as I start to see the it getting white maybe just a quarter of an inch then I'll turn it so you can see how it's a little bit raw in the center can everybody see that and so then I'll cook it for a couple more minutes now once when I usually when I turn it and it's cooking a little longer now. The, the outside edges kind of all turn a little bit white because of the heat that's around it. So I can't really tell as well how rare the steak is. So I'll cut it in half on the grill. And that's what I did here. 
And that's exactly how I like it. So I pull it. If you like it more cooked, just sit there and watch it until that pink is a little bit thinner. So I usually cut it in half like that because I'm not worried about juices flowing out like a steak. I wouldn't do that. If I had a good steak on a grill, I'm not going to do that because now the juices are going to come out of it. And, and I like to leave it and rest it afterwards. But the fish is not going to, you're not going to have a problem if you cut it in half like that halfway through cooking. And then I'll put it on a pan. I'll put it on a cutting board and I'll slice it right away. Because if I let it sit there, it will continue to cook. I find that if I cut it right away and I let it sit there, I can leave that on that cutting board for five minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and it's not going to cook anymore. It's going to look just like that. And that's how I like it. So put a little wasabi and pickled ginger, and there's our meal. Looks just like a restaurant, doesn't it? It does. So, so, it, I, so I have a question. I'm sorry. You, I'm sorry. Let me, um, let me, uh, do you, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I got two more slides and I'm done, but go ahead. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that. Yeah, go ahead. It's, it's, this one's really, really easy. And it's the hotter your pan can is the better. You mm -hmm. can more. You can do this on a grill pan. This is when I have this is that's my induction cooktop in the in the garage. So you don't have to have a fancy grill as long as you can get it hot enough. But I find if you get a pan on a on a stovetop or this in my garage that hot, I mean it's really smoky, but you can do it. The best way is that's my one of my cast iron grill pans that I have on my grill. And that's my preference for tuna because I can get that I can get the grill hotter without any smoke and so it gets really seared on the outside and it's only about you know a minute and a half two minutes on each side again you just watch it and do to your go to your preference but making and that's what it looks like um it's really i, I like the grill pan if i'm not going to slice it up if i'm going to serve it more on a platter with as a steak like that it just makes really good looking grill marks so if you put that on somebody's plate they're like that really good That is how I like it. And it's really easy to do. All right, now, Kathy. Sorry, do you um, buy, so I do, this is what I do to make a lot for my son. Um, I don't eat the fish, but I make it all the time. Do you do sushi? When you, I, I always get confused when I'm at the store. Do you buy sushi grade? Or do you, is there a different type of tuna that you buy when you are going to grill it? Yeah, I buy yellowfin tuna, ahi yeah. tuna same thing same okay. thing and i it's not sushi grade you have to cook it okay so from what i understand sushi grade is able to eat raw mm -hmm. flash it's frozen it's been previously frozen they flash freeze it on the boat i don't know if they if they fillet it and freeze it or if they freeze the whole fish okay. i don't know mm -hmm. uh, that, that would be you'd ask somebody at a at a real not at a not at a heinen's counter but like a couple of these places, I think um, Novelis Seafood, I don't know if they're still around or if it's- They are, seafood. just that's, there. That's one of the premium ones in town that that the restaurateurs get from. If you, somebody worked there, they would tell you exactly you know, what's done. But sushi grade tuna is previously frozen and can be eaten raw. And I don't get that because oftentimes they get it. Like if you, uh, I've, I've bought it at, at a, at a Heinen's cut a place or more like, um, what's that one at Westlake? Fresh Time. They have it there. Uh, it's not expensive. It's only like $8 a pound. Mm -hmm. $8 a pound sometimes. But it's always fishy tasting to me. Yeah. The stuff they serve you at the really good sushi restaurants, who knows what, I don't know what they pay for that. Right? <laughs> Probably crazy because it's not fishy tasting at all. So I have not found sushi grade tuna to be to my liking unless okay. I get it. I serve. I kind of do that as a treat when we go out. I'll get okay. that. I'll get that from the people that really know how to prepare raw stuff. Thank you. That's all I got, folks. So, any other questions, comments? You throw throw in any of your favorite tips. Let me know. Was this helpful? Is anybody going to use any of these methods to go cook fish next time? 
I like Kelly's hot water trick, but I do want to hear more about his company. Yes. <laughs> so Kelly, give us a couple minutes on Panacea Wellness. Yeah, just real quick. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Bill and Stacy. I've wow. been a member of the gym now for a few months and loving it. Um, but yeah, so Panacea. So I'm the owner operator um, of the company. I'm a physician. So services we offer, we have infrared sauna, hyperbaric oxygen, uh, Normatec leg compression, massage therapy, IV therapy. And we also do concierge medical services, uh, as well as hormone replacement therapies, weight loss uh, programs as well with semaglutide, if you've heard of like Wagovi, Ozempic, things like that. And uh, yeah, that's that's really the the gist of it. So it doesn't have to be too long and appreciate it. And I, actually, Bill, I want to tell you too, I, I know you said a couple of times you mentioned giving the salmon skin to your dog or cat. There's a lot of nutrients in it as well. When we take it off, we actually season it and we air fry it and then we'll eat it like that crispy and it's very good. Yeah. So you don't have to give it to the dog. <laughs> I, I have had little pieces. I've tasted it. I Usually when, it's, when it comes off, it's, it's a little more burnt because I'm not trying to make it for me. Mm -hmm. But maybe I'll try that next time. Yeah. Yeah. Try it in the air fryer next time. You know, after, if you take it off before ahead of time, then you can air fry it by itself. It's like a potato chip. Yeah, exactly. All right. <laughs> well, I will do that. Yeah. And also I'll, I'll put my, uh, our website and my email address in the chat as well. If anybody needs it or wants it. Okay. That's awesome. what I was going to ask. Cause I'm going to ask for the spelling of it. So, okay. And, and where are you located Kelly? We're on the superior viaduct. Um, mm. Just west side of downtown, if you know where Luca, uh, the Italian restaurant is, we're uh -huh. literally a 30 second walk from them. Awesome. So I got one quick thing. Now that I've ended my um, slideshow, you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Let's see, this is what. That's what the cedar plank salmon looks like right before I take it off. So it chars the edges. Don't be afraid to let it burn. Now, the good doctor here might tell me that I'm putting some carcinogens into my fish. But I only do that like three times a year. So I think I'm okay. So maybe. All right. I won't judge you. <laughs> oh, yes, you will. That's all right. <laughs> So quick, when you do that water boiling water trick, do you just pour it on for just a, for five or ten seconds, or you is it a, is it a thirty seconds? Yeah, no, it's real quick. I mean, it's literally get it to boiling, and then you just kind of pour it on just to kind of cover everything, and you'll see it. I mean, it'll shrink up real quick, and then you can easily take it off. <laughs> you use a paper towel, or you just put a fork on it. Does it come off that easy? I just know? it's so easy. Just yeah, finger and maybe a fork if you need a little more help, but it'll it will literally just peel right off after that. Excellent. All right. Good. Did you get any good tips, Kirsten? Yes. I'm trying to figure out my microphone here. I think it's okay. I'm muted. Um, no, I like your recipe. Um, I try to get the wild if I can, but I agree. I think it is a little fishier. Um, and the, the, I did have a question. Um, do you, do you really like the air fryer? I've thought about getting an air fryer, but I don't like to have extra appliances laying around. That's why it's in the garage. That's why it's in the garage. Yeah. You know what? I there are there are two or three things that I really like to cook in it, and fish is one of them. Um, okay. Yeah. I it, and they're not expensive. I, mean, I think my it was like eighty dollars or maybe six. Amazon uh, Prime Day is coming up, right? that's where I think I got my deal. You can probably get a good one for 60 bucks. Not that it, the money's a big deal. I know you're yeah. thinking about counter space, but um, yeah, I, I like it much more than I expected. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. I finally figured out how to cook French fries in them. And, and now I really like that. Um, Stacy taught me a trick. So Maybe that'll be on my next month. Yeah, she can, she'll do it. How to time. make French fries and macaroni and cheese healthy. But <laughs> warn you, on the, don't cook anything at 400. Almost all the recipes say, cook it at 400. You burn the shit out of everything. I cook, <laughs> I cook everything at 350. And then 
if I want it a little bit crispy or something, whatever it is, then I'll crank it up to 380 or so or 390 or 400 for just the final couple minutes. But if you put something in there, in mine anyway, 400 for 20 minutes like or 25 minutes, it comes out black. I, yeah. I got a, a air fryer for Christmas for last year from my kids. And one of the things I did is I got a dual basket. One. So it's a little bit bigger. But I like your idea, Bill. I think that I may be setting up a table out in the garage and just get <laughs> some of this stuff off of there. Mm -hmm. So, Bill, would you, if it was in the closet, like where the crock pot is, say, you know, like, would you pull it out as often and use it as often as you do if you had to pull it out? Uh, yeah, I would. I, I Well, I would use it for the certain things that I really like. Like, you know how I like I'll make a, a Reuben sandwich. I'll, I want to toast a couple pieces of rye bread and I'll, I'll just throw them in there because uh, it's, that's easy to, I would not pull it out of the closet for that. But there are little things if I want to warm stuff up, um, if I have a, a leftover something and I don't want to put it in the microwave, I'll take one of these little parchment paper liners and let's say I'll have a sandwich or something and I put it on and I'll warm it in there and I'll take this out and throw it away. I don't even have to clean the damn pan. I mean, it's that easy, but I wouldn't pull it out for that. Good question. So I, I have, I, I have a, I have an air fryer. I find that I mean, because I also have a convec an oven that goes to convection, and I find that if it's like one thing or one baked potato that I cut up in chips or something, I just want to make one quickie thing of that it's I and it's mine's in a cupboard under my on under my um countertop. It's easy to pull it out, throw it in, it's done in five minutes because it heats up in a minute. But mm -hmm. for bigger things, if I'm doing a tray, well, if I want to just do more than just me, the convection oven is, I mean, it's exactly the same thing. That's all it is. That's my assessment. <laughs> I, I think if I had it all do over, I'd probably rather spend my money on a toaster oven, honestly, like a good toaster oven. But you know, it's the, I certainly, I have the dual basket one as well. And it's kind of nice because you can do two different things and have it finish at the same time. It's, that's kind of nice. So it just depends if you're cooking for more than two people or you're cooking for just yourself or, you know, it depends. That's my personal assessment on my air fryer. <laughs> okay. But I don't like anything on my countertop. So everything is, everything is in a cupboard or in a spot. <laughs> in not on the counter pretty much us too except for the keurig we have to have the keurig well okay my keurig is on this counter right now yes it's the only thing <laughs> all right bob did you get anything good out of this yes um i like a couple of the recipes um most of the time we've bought our salmon um frozen and I don't see why I can't do some of this even with the frozen, but I like um, using the air fryer. Um, Lynn cooks it in the oven all the time. Um, but I think um, I want to get some good stuff and use it on the grill. All right, cool. How about you, Terry? Kathy buys what is it, smoked salmon all the time? Yeah. From our Hungarian uh, meat market downtown. And it's really good. Yeah. And then we picked up some at the restaurants and here and there. I just wonder if we've overcooked the ones that haven't turned out well. Maybe. And that's what we. I think I learned here. And now we use a Blackstone versus where you're, you were using skillets. Mm-hmm. So I think I would convert it over to a Blackstone, but I don't think that'd be a problem either. So no, my, this, this pan sitting on top of my gas grill is a, it's Blackstone. It's a Blackstone. Yeah. same thing. I just don't, it's just smaller. The Blackstones are cool because if you're cooking for 30 people, you got that whole big, yeah. we had a blast with the, with the Blackstone. It's, <laughs> it's opened up a lot for us. There's a reason why I didn't, I finally didn't get it. I finally decided not to, because I wanted one for a long time. Yeah. Uh, when somebody told me about it is I don't clean my grill really well after I'm done cooking. I'll scrub it off, but then I'm eating and then I'm done. I clean it really well when I re preheat it and I'm going to cook now. 
you can't do that with a Blackstone. You have to be disciplined. From what I've been told, you have to be disciplined to clean that thing spotless. Mm -hmm. You can't just leave it a little crusty, come back three days later, and then expect to get it clean like you would right after. Is that a fair statement? It is. I'm not a perfect cleaner, but I do make sure I scrape everything off. Yeah, I, I, I just, I know I wouldn't. But this thing, you know, it's just smaller. I, I clean it. And, it, and this thing cleans up perfectly, even if I leave it a little crusty. Yeah. But it's that's probably four or five years old. That's how long that's <laughs> lasted. It's crazy long. So if I didn't have that, then I would probably get the Blackstone. But you're what you cooking on the Blackstone is going to be exactly like I've talked talk to you tonight. And you that's what I to, think. Not yes. to just anything. Yeah. Buy so, a little bit better quality fish and don't overcook it, and it'll be a whole different world. Yep. So. All right. So Kelly, we learned something from you. Did you learn anything from us or me? Yeah, absolutely. I've never uh, thought about cooking it in the air fryer before. So that's interesting. So I know we were talking about the air fryer. I love the air fryer. We, I mean, if I can, as long as it's not like a soup based thing that needs to be in a bowl, if I'm reheating it, it's going in the air fryer. It's not going in the microwave. So yeah. So yeah, would definitely love to try cooking some fish in it. Cool. Outside. <laughs> yeah yeah i'll Harry, take, take it out back <laughs> Harry, you still with us? yeah i'm still here okay <clears throat> help it all anything good to come out of it yeah so i've been interested in the cedar plank techniques um haven't tried it but feeling good about doing it now um and a lot of the rest has just been reinforcing things that i've known one thing about the cedar plank method is that I've noticed if I do let it cook longer, or maybe it's a little hotter than I thought, uh, mm -hmm. it it never seems to be bad. It's not like overcooking salmon in the, in the other the other two ways. Yeah. So that I think I don't know why. I don't know maybe it's just smokier flavor, but I don't think it's as critical. Maybe if you're concerned about it, I, I think I actually like it a little more medium to medium well as opposed to being medium rare like I do regular fillets so probably the safest bet yep. you see Kristen's on not we have Kristen now we have Kristen Kemper are you there Kristen <laughs> oh she's probably on mute maybe ask to unmute I know they make a lot of salmon for their family but they make it in the oven uh -huh. like uh from cost you know that salmon you get from Costco yeah, there's all kinds of ways. You know, we have a Rob Goodwin, a good, a longtime member of ours. His wife is his wife is a real chef, um, sure. and she has a favorite way. She taught me once, where she takes uh, just salmon fillet and takes it in parchment paper, wraps it, and just kind of tents it. And um, I don't even I don't know. She puts a little olive oil on it, and maybe just some seasoning, salt, and pepper, and she puts it in the oven for 20 minutes, and it comes out perfect. She because it it keeps it moist because of the tenting of the parchment paper. And she says that she swears by it. So everybody's ha everybody has their great stuff. I wouldn't mention that myself because I haven't done it and I couldn't answer your questions, but you know, there's plenty of ways. I just showed you mine. I use that when I'm in walleye. I okay. can it and I put some seasoning in it. Yeah, cool. All right. My computer got here. All right, Stacey's computer died. She's coming down here to say goodbye to everybody. And so if there's no other questions, thank you so much for sitting with us and listening. And we're going to do the drawing tomorrow. And I'm going to make sure that all the names, I had some late registrants that um, wanted to get in the list. So we're going to do that drawing and we'll announce it and I'll send a message out to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great thanks, Kelly, for donating. <laughs> have, a great, have a great Thursday, and we'll Thank see some of you tomorrow and some of you soon. Thank you, guys. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, Kelly, you look yeah. a lot different than when you're done working out, like I see you. <laughs> well, are you going to be there tomorrow? Don't we all? Eh, I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure. That would be four days in a <laughs> row between my physical therapy and Bill. <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up nice, right? I appreciate it. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a great evening. All right. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye. 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 Good job. I'm going to my stupid show is on. <laughs>